Hello, all my truth seekers. My name is Keisha. Welcome to my live show. I will discuss the backlash involving Simone Biles' husband, Jonathan Owens, and the dark secrets of WikiLeaks. I wasn't going to do a video about Simone Biles, but I had something to say. Upon reading her story, well, have and have been kind of flooding my social media feed for about a week or so. I was like, you know what? I think it's meant for me to say something about this. So here we go. Please note that this is all alleged. I've never met any of these people. I've deeply researched all of my information. This is a trigger warning. In this video, I may be talking about or showing sensitive material about some subjects or topics that may be disturbing or upsetting or may bring forth some troubling memories, as you read in the description or title. With that said, either in the video now or brace yourself. Aside from that, enjoy. As most of you know, Simone Biles' husband, Jonathan Owens, said Simone aggressively pursued him. According to Owens, the former Houston Texans player was reluctant to hop into a serious relationship because he was so new in the NFL and was a bachelor then. He alluded that he was unsure about giving up his single life. Love prevailed and once the couple linked, the rest was history. Because he said this, Simone fans went in. Simone said this as the discourse continued. Biles asked those on X in a frenzy about her love life. Are y'all done yet? This is what she said on December 23rd. In a follow-up post, which has since been deleted, the star athlete blurted out on social media, y'all want me to be insecure. Mm. Sounds like a girl. <laughs> Bows divulged more about their relationship during Peacock's 2023 back that year up with Kevin Hart and Kenan Thompson. Oh, those two are hilarious. <laughs> When asked who the better athlete in, in an episode is, she replied, I think we're good at our sports. She said, difficulty and ability. Gymnastics is harder if he agrees or not. And to the comment of Owens claiming that he didn't know who she was before they began dating, she said, I know your name. Okay. Hart then wanted to backtrack as he inquired about the debates and heated arguments being had in the Owens household, including who is the better athlete. Um, this is what she said. We fought over it a couple of times and then we vowed we wouldn't talk about it again once we got married. But it keeps coming up every time, <laughs> Biles explained. He has done my workout in the gym and he could barely do it. However, when it came to doing his NFL workouts, I crushed it, she said. Hey, my truth seekers, did you know that I have a blog? A blog that I post personally selected stories onto. I also have an online journal where I give you a peek at my personal life and more. So please go to the truthshowchannel.blog. All the links are below. Shots fired, said Thompson before Hart added. It's a lot of uppercups being thrown. Many on social media read into Bao's recent remarks, accusing her of carefully protecting her husband's ego in a comment section of the Neighborhood Talks post. She's a gold medalist, enough said. It's clear as day she's the better athlete, said one person, while another said that interview truly put a mirror on their relationship, and now it seems she is trying so hard to change the narrative probably to not have to admit to herself that it's true. Boy, these comments are so truthful. A handful suggested that the two pause during interviews while some believe their love is just as strong as it was before the controversy. A third social media user, her entertaining that conversation lets me know she loves him real bad. <laughs> now, before I get my commentary, take a look at these clips. Simone Biles' husband is going super viral right now for saying that he is the catch in their relationship. And the reason this is so funny is because bro is literally known as Simone Biles' husband. But if you didn't know, he is also this dude, number 34, the guy who had the perfect angle to make a tackle and looked like my grandmother out there getting absolutely cooked for a touchdown against the Chargers. Chris Godwin had 155 yards against the Packers thanks to number 34 who was trying to tackle his own teammates. And on this play, you can see him standing completely still in the end zone while the receiver scores a touchdown right next to him. Sometimes you literally need a graph to show how bad his coverage is because he was one-on-one -on -one here and just tracked the route number 34 takes on this play since it is actually unbelievably bad. Basically, he's a terrible NFL safety compared to Simone Biles who is the greatest women's gymnast in history. But the funniest part is that they met on a dating app which means if I had just downloaded Hinge, I could have had Simone Biles. While number 
2004, claims to not have known who she was before they started seeing each other when bro was tweeting about Gabby Douglas during the summer of 2012. Simone Biles' husband is a walking red flag. I always say we and the men that catch, man. I always say we the catch, man. Yeah, so she really booked you. She did, though. She is did, what you said. I, I was fighting it. I was fighting it. So I was you, fighting it. So it this man got into a relationship with Simone Biles, and he's acting like she's the one who should be lucky. How in the hell did you pull Simone Biles? <laughs> man, <laughs> man, we, how did you do that, bro? Man, it's cute. Really, how she pulled me, man? That's the question. Oh. He pops up, and I'm like... Let me see who this is. Gymnastics. I ain't never, you know, I, I never really paid attention to gymnastics. So it, I didn't know who she was at the time. But like the first thing that I saw was that she just had a bunch of followers. So in my mind, I'm like, okay, she got to be good. If yeah. I promise you, I'm a, I'm a real life story. When she won the Olympics, I was in college and we didn't have NBC. We didn't have Olympic channels. And we're in. I just don't believe that he didn't know who Simone Biles was. Like think that he has a little bit of jealousy towards his wife. Listen to this. It was all these moms and, you know, they're there with their kids. And we walked past and everybody stopped and just kids are like shaking. And it's like, oh, my God. And I'm like, you thought it's because you thought you were fine. Huh? Man, nah. <laughs> That's just funny. They asking me. They like, here, can you take this picture? And I'm like. <laughs> so he centered so much of their love story around the fact that she chased him. <laughs> because if she wouldn't have messed with me, chances, were, chances are, like, I probably wouldn't have. I probably was just mine would have went somewhere else and wouldn't have thought to, you know, um, but she, she measured me and we've all been here where we're all just like googly eyes for, you know, a mediocre man who doesn't actually like see us as a person. And it's so easy to just be like, oh my goodness, he can do no wrong and make a lot of excuses. Kind of look at that type of talk as funny or endearing. He was low key dissing her multiple times in this interview and men do this all the time. If you read between the lines of this podcast interview, it's just like actually sad more than anything. Also, he made her drive to see him. This is crazy to me because if a guy actually wants to see you, he's going to go the distance to see you. I went on a date with a guy that drove two hours. Two hours. It was a four hour round trip to go on a first date with me, a coffee date. I have no judgment towards Simone at all. I think that this is just like, very common in a lot of relationships it's just like insane that a man that is married to simone biles would talk like that like, the enthusiasm was not there people have way more enthusiasm for talking about their pets than he did talking about his wife and i'll say it, i listened to the podcast and i really loved his story he was very vulnerable he seems like a good guy but i i am just so bothered by the way that he's talked about Simone in this. There are so many men who are okay with their baseline of happiness just being so low. So they'll stay in relationships with people that they don't actually like that much. And I think a lot of men just aren't happy. And instead of, you know, being honest with that with their partner, they're just mean. I don't doubt for a second that he loves her. I do wonder like, how much does he like her? Like Simone as a person. I just wish that he would talk about that more. I'm also just tired of men being so unenthusiastic about the person that they're with. I'm like, if you don't feel excited and happy to tell people about your partner or your relationship, if you, when you love someone or even just something, when you talk about it, you're able to like feel it from the other person. It's just like, oh my goodness, this person loves that thing and you know it for sure. And you don't have to question it at all. But this man is making us all question, does he even like her? And that means that his enthusiasm to be with Simone Biles is too low. Anyways, if I'm ever in a relationship with a man who has any sort of tone close to this when talking about me or our relationship, I'll just go find a different one because this, this type of tone, this type of attitude, not it. worried about balls because when a man is constantly in competition with you it is rooted in insecurity this needs to be better and can get very toxic because it put balls in a predicament to either demise herself or appease to his insecurity and ego or don't change anything well this is what will happen owens can get vile verbally abusive and in some cases violent speaking from personal experience this diminishes his competition so he can regale and become greater 
there are hardly any situations such as this that end well. You all see what happened with Bobby Brown and Whitney Houston, right? Where Whitney had to diminish herself to make Bobby Brown feel better. She subjected herself to so much to soothe his ego, which made her do drugs more because she wasn't happy with herself. Not to mention Whitney doing this, her stardom took a plunge. She lost a lot during those years of self-devaluation. From the way Simone looked at Owens, it scares me. Because if she spent most of her youth building up her career and not having time for our private life, which I'm sure what was the root of this, this could leave her vulnerable to manipulation and heartbreak, especially with a former and very experienced bachelor such as Owens. He could have Simone so stigmatized and gullible, whereas he could convince her to do anything. Considering he's insecure, one of the things he would do is try to slow her down which could be by verbally abusing her, secretly drugging her, or getting her pregnant. I mean, no offense to my Sierra people here, so um, just please bear with me here. I'm a huge fan of Sierra, and this is why I care about her well-being. I mean, look at Sierra and Russell. Sierra's career hasn't been the same since she married him. It seems Sierra got pregnant or had a little one to deal with before any project while Russell went off to football camp. He has to ground Sierra, it seems. Like this last time, Rosso knew Sierra was getting ready to do some moves with Chris Brown and a whole bunch of other people, you know, something with her new album, et cetera, you know, being Sierra, her fabulous self. He says, I want another baby. Sierra, who would do anything for him, agreed. They gave Rosso at least a year or two to ground her. While he goes off to no talk, what goes on the road stays on the road at football camp. Oh, and to soothe his guilt and keep her tamed, he tries to buy her masters, just like an abuser who beats this woman and then lavish her with gifts. I'm not saying this is the type of pattern, but just do a fact check on me. Sierra is so talented, so beautiful. I know she will recover, but I hope she wakes up soon and sees what's really going on. I also hope this doesn't happen to Simone because she is finally having an amazing intercourse married and she's not alone i also hope i'm wrong about all of this <laughs> but i know i'm not with that said let's move on to the next subject on march 16th 2016 wikileaks launched a searchable archive of over 30,000 emails and email attachments sent to and from hillary clinton's private email server while she was Secretary of State. The 50,547 pages of documents span from 30th of June in 2010 to the 12th of August in 2014. 7,570 of the documents were sent by Hillary Clinton. The emails were made available in the form of thousands of PDFs by the U.S. State Department as a result of a Freedom of Information Act request. More PDFs were made available as well on February 29th for 2016. An additional 995 emails were imported up to, to about February 2nd of 2018. Take a look at these clips. Why did a WikiLeaks released email in 2016 involving Hillary Clinton say, quote, I will be sacrificing a chicken in the backyard to Moloch? Carthage was a city located in modern-day Tunisia, destroyed during the Third Punic War in 146 BC. The archaeologists quickly found tens of thousands of urns buried beneath the earth. The urns contained the bones and ashes of animals, as well as newborn children. Among the discoveries, the archaeologists also unearthed various artifacts with the inscription MLK. And thanks to hidden camera footage released to the public, a modern-day ritual involving Moloch happens yearly at the infamous site of Bohemian Grove. You see, Bohemian Grove is a camp retreat for the most elite people in the world. This includes celebrities, politicians, ultra-wealthy business people, and even U.S. presidents. The footage depicts a bizarre gathering around a wooden statue of an owl, the symbol of Bohemian Grove. Members stand around it, dressed in strange costumes, chanting and praying to the owl. Then the owl is set on fire with a torch, 
as members chant and applaud amidst the blaze. There is now a debate online that this owl is supposed to symbolize Molech. In 2016, during the U.S. presidential campaign, thousands of emails from Hillary Clinton's personal email server were released to the public by WikiLeaks, an international organization that publishes secret information, news leaks, and classified media provided by anonymous sources. The emails were obtained through hacking or phishing of the email accounts of Clinton's campaign staff and the Democratic National Committee. The leaked emails included private and public correspondence between Clinton, her campaign staff, and other political figures. The content of the emails ranged from mundane everyday exchanges to sensitive discussions about policy and strategy. One document shows two emails requesting information on the locations of buried Nephilim and the Gilgamesh Resurrection Chamber. In 2003 shortly before the Iraq invasion, the BBC reported that a German-led archaeological team had discovered what they believed to be the tomb of Gilgamesh. After this BBC report, no additional information is available. It is a known fact that the US government is actively researching and reverse engineering extraterrestrial technology. One of the most famous examples is the Roswell UFO incident in 1947, which has been the subject of numerous investigations and debates over the years. According to some accounts, the US government recovered a crashed UFO and the bodies of several extraterrestrial beings in Roswell, New Mexico and subsequently kept the incident secret from the public. With this information in mind it is not hard to see why the US government would be interested in recovering ancient Anunnaki technology and the bodies of buried Nephilim and Anunnaki like Gilgamesh. What did Hillary Clinton possibly know? Is this connected to alleged Anunnaki technology found by the US military in Iraq? Did the Clintons, the deep state and the US government recover the body of Gilgamesh? Did they discover other ancient technology in Iraq? At the end of the rabbit hole I find myself left with more questions than I now have answers. WikiLeaks revealed the existence of an illegal CIA spying program. Assange withheld most of the details of that program so as not to compromise American national security. But the story was still deeply humiliating to the CIA. In Washington, CIA director Mike Pompeo decided to murder him. Pompeo discussed with his deputies how the CIA might kidnap Assange from the embassy in London or poison him inside. That is not conjecture. Multiple witnesses heard Mike Pompeo say that. At the time, keep in mind, Julian Assange had not been charged with any crime in the United States. Mike Pompeo considered it a death penalty offense to embarrass the CIA. You may be asking, is any of this legal? Can federal appointees use tax dollars to kill people who annoy them? Well, not technically. Mike Pompeo committed a felony, conspiracy to commit murder. And yet somehow, Mike Pompeo is not in prison. Instead, he's the toast of the donor class, a friend and advisor to the most powerful people in America. It's Julian Assange who's in prison for the crime of offending Mike Pompeo. It seems that WikiLeaks secrets reveal much more information that hasn't been discussed until now. Of course, nothing will happen to these individuals because this was years ago and they're still free. But the leaks prove that the government slash elite is hiding so much darkness. And considering there's nothing above them besides the CIA or FBI, they can't be trusted. No offense to my honest agents out there. We love you. And I'm not going to say too much on this subject because this is really straying on troubled waters. But we'll talk about this a little bit more later to be continued. Now... That's it. Let me know what you all think below on that. No, don't forget to subscribe, share, and like. Hit that bell to get notifications when I do post my videos. See y'all later. Love you all. Bye.